Literature has brought out some of the best ideas I've ever seen in paleo media. Unlike what you might see in other formats, there are plenty of examples of weird and experimental ideas expressed through paleo literature. And for the most part, of the ones that I've at least covered here on the channel, I've enjoyed most of them. Sapient alien dinosaurs, cave dwelling Utah raptors, antediluvian body horror. Books, novellas, and short stories have easily become my favorite format to experience dinosaur-related content because there's less restrictions when it comes to literature, thus leading to more risks being taken and more experimental works being pushed out. That being said, this has also resulted in some of the weirdest dinosaur content I have ever seen. And I'm not willing to stoop so low to cover some of these topics, despite how much you fucking weirdos want me to. However, if you look long enough, you'll run into some very weird sci-fi stories. Ones involving dinosaurs, and possibly other animals, like... Oh, I don't know, a giraffe maybe? And maybe these two animals are mixed to create a super monster of some kind that goes on a murderous rampage, right? Sounds very weird, right? Surely a, a story like that doesn't exist though, right? Wrong. Not since Velocipaster have I seen something so goddamn beautiful. Released on October 7th, 2022, Giraptors is a science fiction horror novella made by Darren Martinez and Sam Ibram. And it's about an investigative zoologist who's invited to a wildlife park by one of his associates to check out the body of a victim who unfortunately fell into the lion pen. Little do they know, the real culprit of this killing was done by an abomination secretly created by a mad scientist who also works at this park. This titular abomination is a giraffe-raptor hybrid, also known as Giraptor. I knew the moment I saw this cover, I had to find out what this book was. And it was pretty much everything I expected it to be. It's a batshit, crazy, gory mess of a story, but it's so entertaining. The best way I can describe this story to you is that if the Asylum movie studio decided to go into the book writing business, it would probably look something like Giraptors. I'll go through the story in a bit, but as always, I want to give a little spotlight to the creators behind the project. So, as I mentioned earlier, there were two authors who wrote this book, Darren Martinez and Sam Abram. Because this is more of a smaller scale book, you know, not one that has a whole lot of traction, in turn, there's not a whole lot I can find about the authors beyond what's said in the About the Authors section of the book. So, according to this section, for Martinez, his love of science fiction, action, and horror media would be a big inspiration to some of the projects he's created more recently though he began writing all the way back at the age of 12. Popular books during his time, like the Goosebumps series, would end up inspiring him to create a parody series called Moose Dumps. Ibram also has a passion for writing, but has taken this interest in a different direction. His love for film would lead him to pursue acting, but eventually he also developed an interest in writing, starting off with short stories and later on working on screenplays. He would continue to chase after this passion by studying studying film at Temple University. And somewhere down the line, he would partner up with his friend Martinez to create the Giraptors book. And that's pretty much all that was said in the book. Now, you guys might not know, but I'm a nosy little bitch, and I really wanted to know more about this book and the authors. I mean, can you blame me? It's not every day you run into a story as crazy and weird as Giraptors. Well, I, I mean, I do cover a lot of weird shit on this channel, I'm not gonna lie. But Giraptors is unique, okay? Shut up. I managed to get in contact with Martinez via email, and he was nice enough to take some time to answer some of my questions. He gave me a little bit more information on what led up to the book. Apparently, both him and Sam went to film school and both had aspirations of making a big budget science fiction movie or project of some kind. They were inspired by the wacky and ridiculous nature of Sharknado, saying, We were witnessing the power Sharknado had at the time on sci-fi and knew we wanted to crossbreed something that shouldn't be bred. When the idea hit us, I just imagined all the fun a raptor could have with a long neck. Once we had the idea, we drew inspirations from films such as Jurassic Park, Tremors, and Aliens. 
As weird as this story sounds, it's always cool to hear the story behind them. What resulted was not only this book, but the very interesting art that accompanies it. The cover and concept art was done by artist Hector Ortega, who is a very talented illustrator and graphic designer that primarily focuses on creating art pieces on all sorts of pop culture characters. But he would contribute to the Giraptors book by using his skills to create a pretty solid visual representation of the titular monster for the cover, along with a couple of concept pieces. I'll leave all of these guys' socials in the description below if you want to check out more of their works. And of course, I'll leave a link in the description of where you can buy and read Giraptor specifically. If you're at all interested in weird, crazy, B-movie level creature feature stories, I'd say Giraptors is probably up your alley. I do also want to note that there's really not much commitment to the book either. It's pretty cheap and only 88 pages. The book is very simple and straightforward in its writing and story and really doesn't demand much from the reader at all. I managed to finish the book in a single evening. So yeah, I guess if you're interested in it and would prefer to read it over watching this video on it, check out the links down below. Just know that I'm going to spoil the book because I feel like for you guys to understand what I'm talking about with how weird and crazy this story is, I need to go through some of the story itself. So I'll give a little synopsis and we can go from there. So with that said, let's take a look at Giraptors. The book starts with a couple of scientists named Dr. Vexio and Hector, who are working on an undisclosed experiment, but it involves injecting animals with a serum of some kind. In this case, they're using the serum on an iguana, and right as they're performing this experiment, their lab is infiltrated by an animal's rights activist who attempts to take pictures of this experiment to expose to the public, but he stupidly exposes himself to the scientists by just stepping into the lab and making his presence clear instead of just staying stealthy. Right before he does this, the serum that's injected into the lizard causes it to rapidly turn into a raptor, and the newly made dinosaur breaks loose and kills the activist and dying shortly after. The two scientists clean up the mess and throw the activist's body in the lion pen of the park they're working at to make it seem like a fatal accident. As they do this, their computer screen flashes text that states the raptor DNA was incompatible with the iguanas, but as it's searching for a match, it eventually finds a compatible animal, a giraffe of all things. In the next chapter, we're introduced to our main character, Hank Hendricks, an investigative zoologist. Percival, the owner of the park, which is called the Attenboro Habitat Park and Rehab Facility, invited Hank to investigate the body of the activist that, at this point, had been discovered and recovered from the lion pen. Hank used to work at the park as an intern and was considered to be the best intern there before he eventually moved on to bigger and better things. But his friend and former boss, Percival, needed his help figuring out the park's current problem with animals going missing and now a body being found in the lion pen. As they investigate what's left of the body, a couple of more animals rights activists break into the park and into the giraffe's containment unit inside the lab, which I guess is just empty of any workers or personnel. What they find are multiple giraffes locked up with electronic chains that the activists try to unlock using the computer, but because I guess they can't read, they end up accidentally initiating the raptor sequence and mechanical arms, all carrying the raptor serum, inject all of the giraffes at the same time time, which caused them to immediately transform into giraptors. The monsters break out of containment and get loose around the park, killing many people in the process. Dr. Vexio and Hector return to the lab to see what all the commotion is about before Dr. Vexio is killed by one of the giraptors, but Hector is able to get away. One of the park's employees and Hank's love interest that we were introduced earlier, Stacy Morganson, is also attacked by one of the giraptors along with Hank and Percival. But all four of them, along with a few park workers and tourists, are able to make it to the temporary safety of the visitor's building. They call for help, but because Hank is, you know, this fearless good guy character, he feels like they should make their own move to the security center to grab some weapons and head to the lab to get some answers. Hector wishes to tag along, so him and Hank make a run for it while the rest of the survivors stay put. It's not long before one of the Giraptors notices the two and chases after them. Meanwhile, a couple of other Giraptors attempt to break into the visitor's building, forcing the survivors to flee to a bunker 
bunker at the maintenance shed. The Draptors managed to pick off some of the survivors by snatching a couple of them by literally wrapping their necks around them and crushing them like a boa constrictor. One of the park workers, Joffrey, stays behind to distract one of the Draptors so that the others can get away. In the process, the Draptor bites off his foot, but Joffrey pushes on to kill the animal by pulling on the gas line in the kitchen and opens a lighter. As he does this, I kid you not, this dude says like three different one-liners in a row to the Draptor before blowing the building up. Ready for the main course? Dinner is served, and your toast. Ready for the main course? Dinner is served, and your toast. F in the chat for Joffrey, dude went out like a fucking champ. Going back to Hank and Hector, they eventually make it to the security office and the lab, but Hector then knocks out Hank and steals his weapon, along with gathering his hard drive of information about the Raptor project and a vial of liquid before running away from the lab. When Hank comes to, he's able to find another weapon and kills a couple of Raptors on his way to the bunker, where Stacy, Percival, and a family of four are huddled. Right as they try to think of their next move, another other Giraptor comes out of nowhere and bites the head off of the father of the family of survivors. The rest of the survivors are able to get in a golf cart and Hank sends them to the insectarium while he fights off the Giraptor with the weapons he has. The survivors make it to the building with Hank right behind them being chased by another Giraptor. Right before he makes it inside, the story describes this next part saying, A Giraptor jumps onto the trail standing between Hank and the insectarium. Hank aims his gun and runs towards it. The massive Giraptor hops on the top of the parked golf cart, crushing it like an aluminum can. It then rushes towards Hank, but Hank slides on his knees, avoiding a talon swipe, shooting the Giraptor in the balls and blowing off its Giraptor genitals. I'm, I'm not joking. It says this. It actually says this. One minute, you're just living your best life, killing some nearby people and whatnot, you know, as you do. The next, you get shot in the balls. Anyways, Hank makes it inside the insectarium, and the group's next goal at this point is to make it to the park's helipad where a chopper is waiting for them to fly away in. Luckily for them, Percival served in the Royal Air Force and can fly all of them to safety away from the Giraptors. It's so weird saying Giraptor. I feel like I've been saying it way too much. Anyways, while all of that is happening, three police officers, Sheriff Wells and his two deputies, Hernandez and Billington, show up outside the park's gates responding to the call that was sent out earlier. As they try to get the gates opened, a Giraptor grabs Billington from over the fence and drags him away from the area. Wells and Hernandez climb over the fence and chase after the monster. This entire time, the Giraptors have been killing people at first sight, but this time they've taken their prey alive. The officers manage to locate the dinosaur giraffe thing, who seem to have made their den in the tortoise enclosure and try to save Billington to no avail. There's a part during this sequence that I found really funny because Wells and Hernandez are finally able to get a clear view of what this thing looks like and they try to rush it by shooting it a bunch and Wells is like, aim for the head and Hernandez responds with, fuck giraffes. I don't know why, I just found it so funny. I, I think just out of context, the whole scenario is just hilarious. Imagine a police officer going up to a dinosaur giraffe, takes aim, and just yells, fuck giraffes, as he tries to headshot it with his pistol. The two officers fail in saving their friend and are eventually chased off, where they meet up with Hank and the others on their way to the helipad. And of course, they're yet again ambushed by a bunch of giraptors that end up killing the mother of the two children in the process. Stacy, Percival, and the children run for it, while Hank, Wells, and Hernandez fight off the pack of giraptors. Luckily, Luckily, they're able to get away and make it to the Bat Sanctuary where they once again split up. Hank and Wells go off to find Hector while Hernandez stays at the sanctuary to protect Stacy, Percival, and the kids, but he's terrible at his job because the kids are snatched by a pair of Giraptors, causing Stacy to chase after them and in turn causing Hernandez to chase after her, leaving Percival behind to warn the others when they return. Hank goes after Hector and has Wells go back to the others only for him to find out what happened to the kids, Stacy and Hernandez. So the new plan is to have Percival go get the chopper ready while Wells goes after the others. 
Yeah, in case you couldn't tell, there's a lot of back and forth with this story, and it only continues from here. On their way to the dinosaur's lair, Hernandez gets attacked by another giraptor and loses his arm in the process, but is able to kill the dinosaur. When him and Stacy finally make it to the lair, Hernandez tries distracting the two giraptors that seem to be on guard while Stacy goes after the unconscious children. Stacy is able to shoot one of the giraptors with the gun that Hernandez gave her, while the other pounces on the officer. Right as Hernandez is about to be struck by the Giraptor, Wells shows up and what follows has to be one of the greatest things I have ever read. Wells guns the Giraptor down and follows his kill with, I am the asteroid that will make you all extinct. This dude really just showed up, gunned down this animal, and proceeds to kill it even more with one of the coldest one-liners I have ever heard. This story is fucking amazing. At some point during all of this, we also find out there's a queen giraptor, which I think is why the other giraptors are bringing some of the food alive, I guess? I don't really know, but it goes after Stacy, Hernandez, and the kids, but luckily Percival shows up in a jeep and gets them out of there. The queen then notices Hank nearby and she chases after him in the souvenir shop, but out of nowhere Hernandez comes out shotgun in hand and shoots at the queen, but then gets killed by it giving Hank just enough time to run away and join Wells, who managed to find Hector trying to escape through the front gates and holds him at gunpoint. Then out of nowhere, I kid you not, a Giraptor Rex shows up and eats Wells causing Hector to get away yet again and forcing Hank to run away from the scene. But to Hank's luck, Stacy shows up in the Jeep, picks him up, and drives off. And another very unintentionally funny scene plays out. Remember Joffrey from earlier? You know, the guy that got his foot bitten off by one of the giraptors before he blew up the kitchen? Well, turns out, even though he was injured and burnt up a bit, he's still alive. For all of two seconds, that is, before the giraptor Rex eats him. He was like, guys, I'm still alive, I'm here, come pick me up! then gets eaten. I, I kid, that's literally how it's played out in the book. The, the poor guy, he just, he couldn't catch a break. Anyways, the two survivors drive off and temporarily lose the Giraptor Rex. They finally arrive at the helipad, which stands in the middle of the parking lot with gas pumps nearby. In the helicopter, Percival and the kids are waiting for them, but they're then attacked by the Queen Giraptor, which ends up killing Percival. Hank then leads both the Queen Giraptor and the Giraptor Rex to the gas pumps. He dodges last minute from the dinosaur giraffes, shoots the gas pumps, and kills both the Queen and the King. From there, the the last four survivors hop in the helicopter with Hank flying them away from the park because I guess he can fly helicopters now. The story ends with an epilogue that takes place a year later. Stacy and Hank are warned about Hector and his new science experiment, indicating a possible sequel in the future. I don't even know where to begin with my personal thoughts on this book. It was a very hilarious, wild, dumb but fun experience. The writing feels very oversimplified, the characters are super one-dimensional, and the story is pretty bare bones. But I will say that the giraffe-raptor hybrid concept is so ridiculous that those parts of the book that featured them, which was a lot of it, were pretty enjoyable for the most part. Not because the concept itself is necessarily good, but it's just absurdly hilarious. Along with that, there were just many funny moments that did have me laughing out loud at times. As weird and ridiculous as this book is, it does have a decent entertainment factor to it. And it's my understanding that this book wasn't trying to be anything more. When I asked Martinez about the book and whether or not it was maybe supposed to be a parody or a satire of those poorly made movies that featured on sci-fi like Sharknado, he responded confirming that this book was not meant to be either. At least that wasn't the intention when he and Ibram were writing it. According to Martinez, he states, It started as sort of a gag idea that played with all of the typical tropes found within this genre. It eventually grew to be its own thing as we wrote it. Now, if there's anything I've learned about covering content like this, it's that there is a market for everything. I'll admit, this story wasn't exactly my cup of tea, even though I found it pretty funny in some parts. But there's definitely a market out there for people who do love these kind of more weird weird, wild, ridiculous stories, and if you're one of those people, again, I'd recommend this one to you. Of course, if you're someone who's looking for something more serious and not as campy or crazy, I'd say it's skippable. 
As far as the future of Giraptors go, Martinez did tell me that he and Ibram had initially planned for it to be a standalone book, but they fell in love with the dinosaur-giraffe hybrids along with the surviving human characters Hank, Stacy, and Hector, to the point where they've outlined a planned trilogy for it. In his final words on the matter, Martinez said, The second book's title should be familiar to those who have read Giraptors and is currently still being written. Looking forward to unveiling the cover art in the near future. Huge thank you to Martinez for taking the time to answer my questions and contribute to this video. That's pretty much all I have to say for now. Thank you all so much for watching, and please, have a nice day.